Question, why do some materials hold their shape, yet others don't? Welcome to the world of rheology. Let's take a look at some materials. If you were to throw this glass of water and this glass of cheese onto the table, they would behave very differently. This is because the material properties of the cheese behave far differently than the material properties of the water. The cheese is exhibiting solid dominant or elastic behavior, meaning that it is resistant to flow and deformation and has a tendency to remain in its original shape. Water, however, flows very easily. This is because water has very liquid dominant or viscous behavior, meaning that it can flow and deform relatively easy and its shape can be changed without much effort. As you can see here, when we punch a block of cheese, there is no existing deformation whatsoever. This is because the cheese block has highly elastic behavior meaning that it can take the impact and spring right back to its original shape. By poking this water, we can see that the water does not put near as much effort into resisting the deformation as the cheese did. This is because the water is exhibiting viscous behavior and its shape can be changed quite easily. Pure cases of elastic behavior could include things we assume to be always in a solid form, like a table or a rock. Cases of purely viscous behavior include most liquids like water and oil. Things do get more complicated though, because not all materials are completely elastic or viscous. They often fall in between. These so-called viscoelastic materials can share properties of both viscous and elastic materials. The amount of viscous behavior and elastic behavior can vary greatly and affect the material properties in different ways. Pizza dough is a good example of this. As you can see with the video sped up, the material is definitely flowing, albeit not with near the velocity as our previous viscous dominant behavior example. This is because the dough has a partial resistance to flow, but is partially demonstrating viscous behavior as well. The elastic dominant behavior of the pizza dough can be observed by poking it and observing the response. Attempting to poke the dough, it puts up much more resistance to the deformation than the water did. As the finger is removed from the dough, the dough partially returns to its original shape that it was in before deformation occurred. But evidence of deformation is left behind. This is because the elastic behavior in the dough is rebounding the dough partially while deformation is left behind from the viscous component of the behavior. The ability of a food to hold its shape or deform is really important to our expectations of it as consumers. If we had pizza dough that did not exhibit viscoelastic properties, it would not make the experience of pizza what it is to consumers today. If oatmeal did not exhibit viscoelastic properties, then it would feel differently in a person's mouth and as they chewed it. Try to imagine what oatmeal might feel like if it was more fluid-like, like say, yogurt, or solid-like, like a cereal. The experience of oatmeal would not be the same for consumers, and those that liked oatmeal the way that we think of it now would be very disappointed with the product. Wah, wah, wah. Pretty important stuff, right? So next time you're at the grocery store, think about the different foods that you see in the aisles. Would their behavior be more viscous, elastic, or a mixture of the two? Maybe next time you have a plate of food in front of you and no one is watching, go ahead and give it a poke. Did it do what you expected? We won't tell. It is for science after all. Until next time.